Hello, welcome back. Um, if you will, have your identities and your unit circle handy. If you need to pause the video while you pull those up, feel free to pause. Let's move into the first example. Find the exact value of sine pi over 12. Now this, if you look on your unit circle, is not an angle that you can see clearly marked. Pi over 6 is, but not pi over 12. Okay, so we've got to figure out how we can find the exact value if the angle is not distinctly marked. First, what I would recommend is if you have an angle in radians that you don't recognize, you can change that, convert that to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. Turns out pi over 12 is equal to 15 degrees. Now, using sum and difference formulas, you can find those on your identity sheet. The idea is to pick two angles from the unit circle that will either add up or subtract to 15 degrees. 45 minus 30 is one option. Find on your identity sheet in the sum and difference identity section, look for the one that has sign and a minus sign in the middle. The expansion is sine 45 times cosine of 30 minus cosine of 45 times sine of 30. You'll have to match up the U's and the V's from your identities sheet to get these expanded correctly and alternate whether you use a sine or a cosine. Now once you get that part figured out, it's not so bad. Sine 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2. I'm pulling these right off the unit circle. Cosine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And sine of 30 is 1 half. Square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4, which is totally fine if you want to write it as one fraction, square root of 6 minus square root of 2, all over 4. Another example, find the exact value of cosine 75 degrees. 75 degrees is not distinctly marked on the unit circle, but you can find two angles that are 45 degrees plus 30 degrees does in fact give you 75 degrees. In the sum and difference section, find cosine and find the plus sign in the middle. The expansion will be cosine 45 times cosine 30 minus, you have to go opposites with the cosine, sine 45 degrees times sine 30. If you can get it expanded correctly, then you've got it beat. Cosine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Sine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And finally, sine 30 degrees is 1 half. Square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. Again, it's totally fine to leave these separated or you can combine into one fraction. Find the exact value of sine of u plus v given that sine u is equal to 4 fifths, u is an angle between 0 and pi over 2, and cosine of v is negative 12 thirteenths, and v is an angle between pi over 2 and pi. Let's start with diagrams and Pythagorean theorem. Sine of u, u is in the first quadrant, so draw an angle in the first quadrant, label it with a u. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have 4 and 5. 5 squared minus 4 squared, that's 25 minus 16, which is 9 square roots to 3. So this adjacent side is 3. 
Now go to the other. Cosine of V is equal to negative 12 thirteenths. V is in quad 2 between pi over 2 and pi. So sketch you a right triangle in quad 2. Mark your angle V. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 12 over 13. Use Pythagorean theorem to get this other side. And I'm going to put a little right triangle there. I'd left it out earlier. 13 squared minus negative 12 squared, that's 169 minus 144, which is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. And because the y direction is going up, that's a positive 5. Now, let's go back to what we were originally asked to find, sine of u plus v using your identity sheet. That expansion is sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. Use your triangles to complete these. Sine of u, that was given as 4 fifths, so I'm just going to recopy it. Cosine of v, that was also given. I'm going to copy it. Cosine of u is 3 fifths. Sine of v is 5 thirteenths. Negative 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65. Common denominator of 65. Combine the numerators. That's negative 33 over 65. Find the exact value of cosine 130 degrees times cosine of 10 degrees plus sine of 130 degrees times sine of 10 degrees. In the sum difference section of your identities, this is an expanded form. I'm going to recopy it here. Be very careful here. We have cosine, cosine, and then followed by sine, sine. Well, the grouping, the way it's written with cosine, cosine, and then followed by sine, sine, has to be one of the cosine expansions. With a cosine expansion, the sine in the middle is opposite when you condense it. So this will be the difference of 130 and 10. Cosine of 120 from your unit circle is a negative 1 half. Now let's combine some of this work um, and the identities that we've done the uh, solving equations that we did on a previous video. Solve 2 cosine x plus sine of 2x equals 0. And we're only going to worry about the solutions within one rotation on the unit circle. The first thing I notice is I have sine 2x. That's a double angle. Go to your double angle identities and locate sine of 2x. That will expand into 2 sine x cosine x. So we have 2 cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x from the double angle identity. These two terms have a 2 cosine in common, so factor that out. 2 cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x. This is the factored form. Set each factor equal to 0 each factor equal to zero. Solve for your trig function. Divide by two. Zero divided by two is still zero. The angles where the x coordinate, because we're doing with cosine, the x coordinates are zero at pi over two and three pi over two. Subtract one. The angle where the y coordinate is negative one is three pi over two. Given cosine theta is 5 thirteenths, with theta being in quadrant 4, we're going to find sine of 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tangent 2 theta. First, 
the angles in quad four, so draw a right triangle that dives into quadrant four. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Using Pythagorean theorem, this third leg, third side, is going to be the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared. That's 169 minus 25, which is 144. Square root of 144 is 12. But in quad 4, the y direction is negative, so don't forget the negative with that 12. Expanding the formula for sine 2 theta, it has 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. Essentially, you take the double angle and reduce it back to single angles. 2 sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's negative 12 thirteenths. Cosine theta was given, that's 5 thirteenths. Think of 2 as 2 over 1. Multiply all your top numbers together. You get negative 120. Multiply your denominators. That's 169. Cosine double angle actually has three different expansions, and one is just as good as the other. I randomly picked the top one. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cosine theta is 5 thirteenths, so we're going to square that. Sine of theta is negative 12 thirteenths from our diagram, and i got to square that. Whoops. There we go. I'd forgotten to write that, and that's a no-no. There we go. 5 thirteenths squared, that's 25 over 169. Negative 12 thirteenths squared, that's 144 over 169. And we're subtracting these to get a total of negative 119 over the common denominator of 169. Once you have sine and cosine, you don't have to use the double angle formula for tangent. If you happen to know sine and cosine, you can use the previous two answers because of the quotient identity. Sine 2 theta divided by cosine of 2 theta. That's a complex fraction, so top times the bottom flipped over your 169's cancel, and two negatives make a positive 120 over 119. Find the exact value of sine 105 degrees using a half angle identity. While you've got your identity sheet handy, locate the section with half angle identities. Sine of 105 degrees, using a half angle identity, 105 is half of 210. So you're going to have to rewrite your angle as 210 over 2. It still has a value of 105, but we need to know that numerator. In your identities, you'll have a plus minus sign. Sine of 105, 105 degrees is up in quad 2. Sine is positive in quadrant 2, and that's why I picked the positive. Had this angle been in quad 3 or quad 4, I would have picked the negative. 210 is going to be the angle we substitute in. So positive square root of 1 minus cosine 210 all over 2. Cosine of 210 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Make that substitution from the unit circle. Two negatives make a positive. One can be written as 2 over 2, and that's what I did here to create a common denominator. 2 plus square root of 3 over the common denominator of 2. 
divided all by this two Two is two over one, so top times the bottom flipped over. Those twos are gonna to get together and make a four multiplied. Square root of the top, we have no idea if it's a perfect square. Highly doubtful it is. The denominator four is a perfect square and it just becomes two. The sum or difference is actually easier to calculate if you can find two good angles. For example, this problem, sine of 105, could have been done this way with a sum formula, sine of 60 plus 45. These two angles are on the unit circle, and they add up to 105 degrees. Now, on the identity sheet, look up sum to product and product to sum the section. Um, these will show up a little bit in calculus too. That's why I'll go ahead and cover them. We're going to start out by going from product to sum. We're going to rewrite cosine 5x times sine 4x as a sum or difference. Look in the uh, product to sum section find, and it has to be in this order, cosine followed by sine. Once you find that expansion, you will see one half. I like to put a bracket and go slow. Sine of the sum of those two angles minus sine of the difference in those two angles. So that's one half sine of 9x minus sine of 1x. Distribute the half, and you have successfully written this product as a difference. Pay very close attention to the order that those are in. Cosine followed by sine has a specific expansion. Now going the other way, we're going to write a sum as a product, and then try to find its exact value. Try to locate the sum where it's sine plus another sine. Once you've identified that, be careful that it's two signs added and be very careful with these angles. So in the expansion, we have two sine, the sum of the two angles over two times cosine of the difference in those two angles over two. So we have 2 sine, 195 plus 105 is 300 degrees, divided by 2 is 150, 195 minus 105 is 90, cut in half is 45. So that would be a sum written as a product. Now let's go ahead and finish this up. We have two, what's sine of 150? Go to 150 degrees on your unit circle, and I need the y coordinate. Yes, it's one half. Now go to 45 degrees and tell me what the cosine or x coordinate is there. That's right, square root of two over two. Very good. These twos cancel. And so that leaves us with square root of 2 over 2. Very good. Reach out if you need help with any of these. Uh, contact by email, phone, office hours, however you want to reach and get help. In class is great. Let me know, and I hope this video helps.